The fact of the matter is you are going to experience occasional culture shock if you move to Thailand. And unless you're a practicing shaman able to drop into deep states of meditation at free will, you may find yourself in situations that make your blood boil. Enter this video. Its intent is simple to better prepare you for the day-to-day -day life in the Kingdom of Thailand should you decide to move here. Let's go! First up, alcohol. Thailand has a well-earned reputation as a place to come and let your hair down and your panties fly with its full moon parties and party till you drop attitude. And although it's legal to open carry alcohol here, there are some contradictions that might cause your eyes to roll. Jet skis. You see, you can't buy alcohol before 11 a.m. or between the hours of 2 p.m. and 5 p.m. at any store. That includes convenience stores, liquor stores, or supermarkets. If you want to drink outside of those hours, you might head for a bar or restaurant, where it is my understanding they typically turn a blind eye to that law. If it's late, but you're looking to party like it's 1999, you might just tip well and see if the bar will allow you to take the bottle home. I've looked into this a bit, and it looks as though Thailand's laws on alcohol are heavily influenced by Buddhism's fifth precept, avoid intoxicants. That's probably why you can't buy alcohol on religious holidays as well. Additionally, you may come across some national parks where alcohol is also forbidden, and I suspect it's forbidden as well at most temples. Number two, don't criticize the monarchy of Thailand. Let me read this for you. Section 112 of the Thai Criminal Code. It is illegal to defame, insult, or threaten the monarch of Thailand, including the king, queen, heir apparent, heir presumptive, or regent. The law has been on the books since 1908. Recently, there was an article in insider.com that I'll link below telling how three influencers were arrested for criticizing the monarch in an online TikTok campaign. So they do take this law pretty seriously. It's rare to hear any tourists getting in trouble in this regard, but you do want to be cautious when you're out in public about what you say regarding the Kingdom of Thailand and its monarch. Okay, for you continuity buffs in the video moving forward, you may notice some subtle differences, but don't worry, it's still me. It's really common in Thailand for businesses to ask their patrons to leave their shoes outside. Most people are used to this at massage parlors, but it's really common here in pharmacies and sometimes even in restaurants. So if you see a bunch of shoes at the entryway of any particular business, just follow suit. And this is a big one. Driving in Thailand is dangerous. I made a video about it after doing a bunch of research. I'll link it up here. But suffice to say, if you're coming to Thailand and you have never ridden a motorcycle or a scooter in your life, I would highly advise you against renting a scooter or motorcycle here. The statistics are crazy. 50 people a day in the country of Thailand die as a result of motor vehicle accidents. If you're dead set on renting something while you're here, please wear a helmet. And you might find yourself in a bus or a van or a taxi where you feel like they're not driving safe. So wear your seatbelt and be cautious. Immunizations for people. Prior to coming to Thailand, Tomo checked out a great number of things. One thing she searched was Japan's recommendations for immunizations for Japanese people coming to Thailand. That led to us getting a number of boosters or new immunizations. What I would recommend is that you search immunizations recommended when moving to Thailand from your country. See what it yields and make the decisions that are best for you. And a quick note on drugs. The Kingdom of Thailand recently decriminalized the recreational use of Mary Jane. And it's safe to say that shops are popping up anywhere where there are tourists. But the laws on the topic are still in flux. So do yourself a favor and check online before you get here. The law states that you can smoke in public, but if it's an annoyance to others, that could be a problem. So just keep it on the down low and be respectful of those around you. Which brings us to number six, vaping. Vaping and e-cigarettes are illegal in Thailand. Again, that being said, you will find these items readily available on the streets of Thailand. It doesn't mean it's legal. And as a foreigner, the fact of the matter is we stick out more than the locals to the cops. So if you're going to vape, be really careful as it is illegal. I would not carry any e-cigarette or vaping materials in your luggage. That makes for a nice segue to the decoy wallet. If you find yourself in the uncomfortable position with a local policeman, you may find that you have the opportunity to pay the 
fine there and then. That may give the local authorities the opportunity to see how much money you have in your wallet. Enter the decoy wallet. A decoy wallet is that extra wallet you carry that has the exact amount of money you would be willing to part with at any moment in time should you need to. I'd say a good amount to carry in a decoy wallet is between three and 500 baht. But that being said, I haven't had any conversations with police, so I don't know. If you have, and you have some good or interesting or even unfortunate stories to tell that you think would benefit, please write them in the comments section below and let others learn from your experience. By the way, a good way to get stopped by the police here is to not wear a helmet. Number, I lost count. Thailand is a developing country. That's another way to say that don't expect systems or roads to work the same way they do in your country. You're likely to come upon roads or sidewalks that are slightly or even seriously dangerous. So I would recommend you keep your eyes open rather than on your phone, as we are accustomed to doing when we're home. Additionally, watch out for hanging wires because they might actually be carrying electricity. If you have young ones, items like this are especially important. Crossing the street is another one. Watch out for glass on the beaches. We walk our dogs on the beach every day and we'll typically pick up glass and trash as we're doing so to help keep the area clean. It's not bad at all on this beach, but it's still there and I know it's worse on some beaches. So be cautious and take care. Additionally, if you go hiking to waterfalls or whatnot, you really should pack sneakers. Waterfalls can be slippery places and often require a long hike in. And if you twist your ankle and are not able to put weight on it, that can create a really bad situation for you. So pack a pair of sneakers, put them on for the hike, and then go back to the flip-flops. Number <laughs> sunscreen. I've read a number of blogs where folks talk about how expensive sunscreen here is in Thailand. You need to be aware that there are four chemicals commonly used in sunscreen that as of 2021, are banned from use in national parks all throughout Thailand. They are as follows. Oxybenzone, octinoxate, methylbenzalid camphor, and butylparaben. And yes, I practiced that. The law states that violators can be fined up to 100,000 Thai baht. And that can include a lot of beaches. See, the thing is that these chemicals are harmful to coral reefs, and they're doing their best to try to protect them. Can't blame them. If you do much research, you're liable to run into videos that warn you of the scams. I'll talk about a couple that I think are valid. If you rent a scooter, a motorcycle, a car, or even more commonly, a jet ski, do yourself a favor and take photos of its current condition. On the jet ski, that includes the underbody. The scam goes like this. You return the said item, and they point out all these new scratches that are on there that they say you were responsible for. And unless you have photo evidence of them being there before the rental, they may have you. Sadly, it's a common way for them to get extra money from renters, saying you caused the minor damage. Prior to moving here, we visited Thailand numerous times and rented scooters and cars, and I'd never have experienced this, luckily. But I always take photos and let the owners see that I'm doing it. I would advise you to do the same. But generally speaking, Thais are very friendly people. Now I want to talk about transportation in general. Firstly, if you're in Bangkok, take public transportation as much as you can. The trains there are reliable, clean, safe, and very reasonably priced. Sticking with Bangkok, taxis are pretty much everywhere. But there are some horror stories out there, and although I've never experienced them, I'll talk about what I've read. Firstly, catching a cab at rush hour is a bad idea, as you may find yourself literally sitting in traffic and watching all the pedestrians pass you by. So if you can avoid riding a taxi at rush hour, that's the thing to do. Then there's the matter of the meter. By Thai law, taxi drivers must turn on the meter, but a lot of them are gonna tell you it's broken. Before you take a seat in the cab, say the words, meter, okay? Press it until you get an answer. If they tell you it's broken or no, then you have a choice to make. Either walk and try and find another cab or negotiate what you think is a fair price to your destination, paying in cash. Assuming you locked in a price, you are not then free to go and check your Finsta account. No, you must pay attention because there are other scams that I want to tell you about. If you search the internet for the words Thai taxi driver arrested for rip off button, it will reveal one of the most common scams. What it is typically on the right hand side of the driver's wheel 
will be a small button that's difficult for a passenger to see. And each time the driver clicks that button, it increases the distance traveled by one tenth of a kilometer, thereby jacking up the end fare. There are drivers who have been busted for doing this. So the thing I would advise you, assuming you've sat down in the cab and he's agreed to use the meter, at that point, I would advise you to say to the cab driver, seven kilometer, right? They will recognize that. And then they will know that you are viewing your maps app along the way. Hopefully it will discourage them from using the button if one exists in their cab. Another common scam is for when you do finally reach your destination, they will immediately reset the meter to zero and then turn and tell you a number that is well above what was on the meter. So keep your eyes open whenever you're in a taxi. Most taxi drivers are not looking to rip you off. And one ride I had, the driver and I were both in tears laughing. I won't tell the story now and waste your time, but it was hilarious and it made my day. I've not traveled by train outside of Bangkok, but I've heard it can be hit and miss. It's a cheap way to travel, but there are some horror stories out there of cars with no AC or trains that broke down, leaving you stranded for days until they get the repair made. So with a grain of salt, traveling by train in Thailand may be just fine. Additionally, there are a lot of bus and independent van operators out there. A lot of them advertise on Facebook, or WhatsApp, just search on the internet and you're bound to come up with a few. Just don't be surprised if they drive erratically. Oh, one last thing before we leave this section that I almost forgot to mention, and that's apps. Consider downloading the Bolt app and the Grab app. You can use both for food delivery and as a taxi service. So check both of those out, B-O-L-T and G-R-A-B. This is a good time to talk about confrontation with ties. Let's say for the sake of conversation, you feel like you have been scammed. Maybe you were in a bar and you think they overcharged you or a taxi driver. Everything I've read or seen online about getting into confrontations with ties, every single person says the following, don't lose your temper. You have to know that the Thai police will almost always take the side of the Thai person. Could be right, could be wrong, but that is the fact. And if that happens to you, my advice to you, is pay what's necessary to get you out of that situation or potentially be prepared to spend the night in jail, even if you're in the right. Again, if you do choose to go that route, do not lose your temper. As the saying goes, the first to get angry in any argument loses. And I think that holds true in Thailand. Look at it this way. It may cost you a couple of hundred extra baht to get out of a situation, but that's a heck of a lot better than spending time in jail. Just food for thought. I say this just to help keep you safe and to keep you out of trouble. If you come here, do your research first, keep your eyes and ears open, and stay safe. That brings us to our final tip, laundry. There are lots of ways to get your clothes clean. If you're on vacation and have the money to spare, you can typically just ask your hotel to take care of it, pay the extra fee, and they'll be happy to do it. For more budget travelers, you will often see machines outside, right in the open. Just stop by a convenience store and make sure you pick up the detergent on your way. Heads up, they don't often have dryers at those locations. Pro tip for travelers, always pack a large and sturdy trash bag in your luggage. You never know when it might come in handy. Laundry, especially so. For us, soon after we settled in Samui, we realized that there were these new laundromats that had been popping up all over the island. They're open 24 seven, and during normal business hour, there's always an attendant working there. There have been times that we've gone in there and all the washing machines are occupied. We've been able to give the attendant our money, our soap, the additional money for the, to start the dryer, and then walk away. Set an alarm according to the time when the washer and the dryer should be complete. Come back, fold the clothes. Sometimes the attendant already has them completely folded. Other times we do it together. Other times they just let us do it. When it's all said and done, we typically tip the attendant 20 or 40 baht. You're not required to do so, but why not? That 40 baht pretty much buys them a meal. Okay, I don't know about you, but that was a mouthful. So if you're still here, you're a champ. Thank you for viewing our channel. We appreciate you being here. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. If you have a comment or just simply hit that like button, that would be awesome. It's a lot of work to do this, but I appreciate the support. Peace.